Morning everyone, Michael Scott, Scotty Man Photo, here at Grapevine Lake in Flower Mountain, Texas. Um, thought I'd come down this morning and see what I could do with a composition that I had in mind in the past. The, uh, the winds are a little bit high, but um, the sky predictions are pretty good. So uh, I had this vision of uh, this uh, red lit sky uh, with kind of the textured rocks leading out into the sky. So uh, really kind of cutting out um, the, the horizon in the back, but just kind of leading over the over the rocky mound into the red sky. Anyway, that was my vision, so. But uh, yeah, I don't know how visions go. Uh, it's gonna require a pretty good sky to make that happen, so I don't know if I'm gonna get that or not. But um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, predictions or, you know, predictions are predictions, so. Uh, you know, I'd mentioned this before, I use some of these apps and uh, I mean, yeah, they're okay, but uh, you know, I've, I've counted on these apps before and they've let me down. And I've uh, passed up opportunities where the apps told me there would be uh, no sky and actually turned out to be a pretty good sky. So don't put all your eggs in one basket and don't count, uh, don't give 100% uh, to these apps. So anyway. Well, that wind is howling a bit, so I hope you can hear me. Um, the sky looks okay, not as good as I thought, or, or as good as I hoped, I should say, but uh, it has some good texture in it and, uh, and some good color. So uh, I think if I can line something up here, I might walk away with something today. But uh, anyway, we'll see. Let's try to go up higher and get more of that sky without getting the city in the background. I'm really trying to eliminate the city in the background. Uh, I certainly having trouble getting the composition that I, that I wanted. The sky is just not quite high enough to, uh, to do what I wanted to do. So I'm looking for other options and other angles. Well, I'm gonna try to compress it get back and compress the scene with the longer lens. I think I'm going to try the, I'm going to go for the 70 to, or excuse me, the uh, 24 to 70. I really want to get, I can't get too far away to really compress with the uh, 70 to 200, so gonna have to get closer I think this 24 to 70 will probably do it we'll see always use a lens hood that's just me yeah I really want to get that foreground and the sky and nothing else in the city just over the horizon I'm trying to eliminate that but but I'm I'm also not opposed to adding that to the image but uh, that's Really trying to stick with the the vision that I had. Eh, that's my goal anyway. But uh, sometimes change of plans means a uh, better image. All right. Well, I found one composition. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the shot. I gotta remember where I was though. Usually I'll take a usually I'll take a stone or something and mark it, but uh, today you're gonna help me out. And I very much appreciate it, but you're gonna stay. You're gonna stay right here. Stay right here while I go get my tripod. Now once I get into position and I've got my composition line. That's when I put my tripod down. I think that's probably uh, one of the best tips I ever got. This twilight, uh, the twilight photography is by far my favorite. 
but uh, it certainly is not without its challenges. Right about there. You know, we're always talking about gear and how a center tripod, a center uh, center uh, post in the tripod is is unstable. And you know, I think uh, I, I like a center tripod, center center post in a tripod, just for the fact that I can raise and lower my my composition with much more ease than I can by raising and lowering the legs. So uh, just something to keep in mind when you're looking at tripods. It's not all um, it's not all about uh, following the trend or or the latest advice from the uh, from the uh, YouTubers like me. I mean, it, it really comes down to uh, to personal preference. I don't know if this image is going to work. It really lacks balance, and uh, now that I can see it on the back of the camera, I, I really, need, excuse me, I really need something else in the image. But I have a plan. I don't normally stage props, but uh, if you don't tell anybody, I won't either. Sometimes I like to use, I prefer the viewfinder. I'll always like the viewfinder as long as it's not an electronic one, but uh, I prefer it over using the LCD on the back of the camera. But, but sometimes I like, uh, it's the only way I can look at the histogram here live. So I like using the histogram. I think adding that, uh, an interesting element in the lower right third line uh, has really uh, helped the image. I don't know if it's going to help it enough, but uh, the sky's nice. I wish it was a little bit higher up, but uh, nevertheless, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stack these. So I'm shooting these at F8 at about 1.6 seconds. And I think... I'm gonna stack about three of these. And I think that'll do it. I really, I really liked the color more on the twilight. Um, it's still technically twilight, but I really like the color I had earlier. Uh, although this is a nice shade of um, kind of orange and, and pink and red all blended in. It really looks nice. I'm gonna shoot as far to the right as I can. Make sure I can sh uh, recover the shadows uh, on the foreground here. The one good thing about the D800, uh, it's pretty good at recovering, uh, clipping, so, clipping the highlights and the shadows. So that's one of the reasons I bought it for its dynamic range. I'll give myself a little room to kind of crop in on the image if I need to. Um, my. Uh, Initial assessment here is that um, it's an okay image, but not spectacular, and certainly not an award winner. But I, I do think that I'm going to um, try to come back when I, if I can ever get back here and line up a fiery sky, I think I could really make that work because the, uh, the fiery sky, if I can get that sky high enough too, It'll really cast some nice reflective uh, uh, colored light down on the foreground. And uh, I think that that could really, uh, really make this image pop. I think I have to get a little bit better angle on these rocks and, uh, and see. I, I, I kind of got lucky with this, uh, this branch laying here, this driftwood. Um, I, I don't think I don't think this image would even have a chance at all uh, of being decent without that driftwood. Now let me scout around for a couple other compositions and uh, maybe something that uh, I can uh, 
come back in the future for. Well, I had uh, captured a composition uh, over on that tree um, a couple weeks ago and uh, got it back in post-processing was definitely not happy with it. Uh, definitely had no color in the in the background. So I am going to see if I can capture that from here. I like the uh, kind of the uh, the bluff there that the tree sits on and the the, the bench that sits beside it or the picnic table. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, zoom in on that with uh, probably about a couple hundred millimeters and, uh, and see if I can capture that. This is what you call a planned image. Um, so I had scoped this out ahead of time. I had an ideal composition in mind uh, with the uh, elements blending in to, to make the image that, uh, that I had in mind. And uh, having planned this, the uh, question is, did I achieve my goal? I would say uh, no. Uh, I, I really needed that sky to be higher. I, I had a vision of more sky and kind of less foreground, so I had to improvise and apply more foreground and less sky because I really ran out of red sky and ran into the blue. So it wasn't really my conceptualized image. So I'm going to have to come back to capture that one. But the good news is this is fairly close uh, to where I live, about a half hour drive and I'm here. And, uh, and that means I can wait for the right conditions or, or hope for the right conditions and, uh, and plan that as best as I can and be here and make all the elements, the stars and moon and everything align uh, to capture that uh, conceptualized image. And then ask myself, is, does that meet my expectations? So I think sometimes uh, as a landscape photographer, uh, we can be our own worst critics. So, but anyway, hey, I'll let you judge this image. Take a look at it. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. So I'm going to get off here and head back. I'll see you next time. And uh, yeah. But anyway, as always, uh, if I don't see you down the road, maybe I'll see you on the trail. Well, this was kind of an image of opportunity. Uh, I didn't plan to shoot this image, but I was overall happy with the composition. But I, I really, the image lacks sharpness. I, I just didn't quite nail the focus and overall not, not really happy with this image. This is the image I had originally set out to capture. Although I was really thinking uh, less foreground and more sky and more of a color cast on the foreground, uh, I didn't quite get that here. But nevertheless, I don't think the image works. I think um, overall it just lacks interest and it doesn't really pull the viewer into the scene. So I think I'll go back and try to capture this again in the future. Maybe a little bit wider perspective and, and certainly more, more sky. Anyway, uh, you be the judge. Uh, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll see you next time.